Well, I've done venom extractions with centipedes before. Ooh. Try that one more time. Yeah, that, that'll work. That's gonna be the method. Oh. oh, oh, did he get you? I'm Spencer Hoffman, and I'm on a mission to discover the secrets of the natural world. We recently captured a giant Texas red-headed centipede while exploring Texas hill country. And now, we are going to attempt to extract venom from this leviathan creature and see what it does to the human body. Only thing is, I got a strange feeling it's not gonna go the way we think. Gage has already expressed how bad of an idea this is. So I'm gonna express to you how bad of an idea this is. Um, this is Scolopendra Heroes, the Texas red-headed centipede, and it is massive. And it's kind of tame right now, but as soon as it gets in here, it's going to be very, very angry. Um, this is one of the largest native centipedes we have here, and it is brutal. I've done venom extraction with centipedes before, and it's it's gnarly, the reaction that you see. And these giant centipedes, they've evolved to eat vertebrates. So I expect the reaction to be even more gnarly if we can get the sample. Oh, he's mad. <laughs> now what we're using is this little container with a little bit of plastic rubber banded at the top. And the idea is basically, kind of like the copperheads we did a while back, basically we're trying to get the centipede to pierce that first layer of plastic and then inject some venom that we can then extract and put into blood under a microscope. I don't think he can puncture that. He definitely ripped through that though. Did he? Wait, I think there's venom there. A little tiny bubble of it. Yeah. Try that one more time. Yeah, that, that'll work. That's gonna be the method. The problem is this centipede is a lot bigger and faster than the little bitty bark centipedes back home. Ooh. Okay, so the method's gonna be, we block the back with this. And I got cocky and I paid for it. Oh, 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 did he get you? No, he didn't get me. Initially, I felt all of the legs grab onto my finger. And these centipedes are so big and strong and their legs are so sharp that all I felt was like a dozen or so legs just poking into me. I didn't feel any kind of bite. And previous videos that have demonstrated the bite of Scolopendra Heroes made it look like the, the pain was excruciating and immediate. And the fact that I didn't feel any immediate excruciating pain I thought I was in the clear, but if we look back, you can actually see in super slow motion when I slipped and didn't pin the centipede just right, he wrapped around and you can see the exact moment that it tagged me. And as the adrenaline started to fall, I noticed two tiny bleeding pinpricks in my finger and I knew that I was in trouble. This, he did get me. He did get you? Yeah, he got me. It's not bad actually. Just a quick bite. It stings, but it's he got me. Get, it's gonna get oh. worse. It's hey, let's take worse. a look at it. Yeah, he got me. Oh, not a very high venom yield, so you'll be fine. But it's gonna hurt. Yeah, it's gonna hurt. Easy. Okay. <laughs> okay. Unintentional bite there. Yep. I need another picture. You happy, Gage? I am happy. This makes me happy. Oh, yeah, it burns. Jack, it's your turn. <laughs> this is why you don't try this at home. You can see right there, he did actually nail me when uh, he reached back around the container. It's not horrible. Um, my entire finger here aches, almost like I jammed it in a door and I can feel an ache and it kind of, it, it almost goes like this way. Like I don't feel it here or here, but I feel it here, which is funny. I also can't bend my finger all the way. Because like, it feels like I jammed it in a door or something. It's not the worst, but you don't want it to happen to you. I'm setting off into the unknown. For years, I was led to believe that a bite from Scolopendra Heroes would be a guaranteed hospital trip. These are powerful, venomous creatures, and Jack's resident toxicologist Gage agrees that these animals are medically significant. However, their venom is not designed for humans. 
They hunt in their environment using those sweeping antennae, scanning for chemical trails of various prey items that they will hunt down and tackle, using dozens of powerful sharp legs to restrain, and then the two front legs, modified venom claws called maxillipeds, to deliver the kill blow, a venomous sting packed with a wide variety of delightful toxins. Unlike small centipedes, the scolopendras have an extra fun component called a myotoxin. These specialized toxins target the muscle fibers, and in small vertebrate prey, the muscles in their body seize up and they're no longer able to breathe, rendering the small animal lifeless. For me, what I expect to see are muscle spasms and cramps as the symptoms begin to progress. All right, so it's been three hours since the bite, and I've got a balloon for a hand. That is kind of crazy really sweaty and I can't quite fully close my hand which is odd some people might freak out when they have like you know it's, it's very warm it's very sweaty um, this is my body's histamine response you know there's um, you know a foreign chemical in my skin um, that is designed to do damage and inflict pain and my body is reacting to it and doing its best to deal with it. Um, I expect it to be localized, it stayed localized. Um, it's uncomfortable, it's uncomfortable, but it's not unmanageable. It is not anything to be concerned about yet, but this is something that I'm gonna be keeping an eye on for the next few hours and updating you because, you know, we don't we don't see Skullopendra hero bites documented too often. and. You know, I am, you know, am I a little bit embarrassed? Yeah, I'm a little bit embarrassed because, you know, that's not how I wanted it to go. And as a wildlife professional, you know, you try to keep animals under control. But, you know, it is, it is still something that uh, it happens. And I have to be forthright about the fact that it happens and that it happened to me. Um, and it could have been worse. It could have been a lot, you know, we were milking several animals today and it could have been a much worse animal. But, you know, of all the, of all the things to take a bite from today, the centipede is probably the better of the, of the three. So, you know, a um, little bit of pain, a little bit of swelling and a little bit of embarrassment. That is a small price to pay for a very valuable lesson. All right, we have just passed the six hour mark. The redness and the heat has stopped, but it is still very swollen. You can see I got almost like a like cartoon hands or something, because I'm very puffy. The area where the bite actually happened is a little tender, and I still can't fully curl my fingers into a fist, but the bulk of the main symptoms seem to be over. After the first night, I was left with no symptoms aside from a little bit of swelling and localized tenderness when the bite site was touched. So what does this mean for Scolopendra heroes? Have we been lied to about how dangerous these animals actually are? Well, here's the thing. I would definitely not recommend anyone take any level of bite from this centipede. It is not fun. However, the excruciating stings we have seen seemed to have been full tanks of venom or the animal was allowed to latch on for an extended period of time. In most cases, a bite from this centipede will come while you're flipping a rock or some kind of cover that the creature is hiding under, and it'll be a pinch and release, not unlike what I received in this experiment. So while it's not fun, it is manageable and absolutely survivable, meaning that this animal is not something to be feared, but something to be treated with the utmost respect and admiration. If you live in centipede country, make sure you're checking very closely when you're flipping over any cover out in the wilderness. Through this experience, I learned a valuable lesson, hopefully, so that you don't have to. If you want to see the adventures that led up to this moment, check out this playlist right here, where you can follow all of the journeys and incredible encounters with some of North America's most iconic wildlife here in Texas. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.